everybody. Welcome in. <laughs> oh, how are you doing? It's so good to see you guys. Hello to all my YouTube family. Hi, Mary, Brenda, Ruby, Diane, Carolyn, Anita, Tara. Floral Nut 10 says, oh, my bad, y'all. Says that Tuesday is now my favorite day and Friday. Mine too. Mine too. How come? <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Hey, Peggy. Facebook is in the house now. Hi, Joy. Hi, hi, everybody. It's so good to see you guys. Did you guys have a good weekend? I know your your week has already started because it's Tuesday, but you know, Mondays don't really count. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I spend the rest of uh, the rest of I spend my Mondays kind of like this. You spend your Monday like that? Please go away. Please be over. <laughs> Tuesday is the official start of the week. Okay. Monday is just one of those things that happens to us. <laughs> we can't stop it. Oh my goodness. So good to see you guys. All right. Letting everybody come on in before we get started with everything. Just want to do a little bit of housekeeping and say hi to everybody like I've been doing and to let everybody know what's going on this week. Uh, so I've got a project for you guys coming up here in just a second. We're going to be using some double drilled Jasper beads and I pulled out some sliders as well uh, just because I want you guys to see the possibilities here because I feel like sometimes double drilled beads and sliders because of the way that they are created. Uh, sometimes they, they, I don't know, they just get kind of stuck in a box and are used the same way over and over and over again. So I want to give you guys some inspiration today. I'm going to do a project, but then we're going to talk about some of the other possibilities and things that you can do with beads that are double drilled or sliders, which are created basically the same way. So that's the plan for today. I've got a Michael's class tomorrow. I'm doing a, um, a macrame pendant. Basically, we're just going to create some of our little uh, famous tushy knots. For those of you who remember the tushy knot, we're going to do some tushy knots around a uh, component that is already pre-made. It's just a really cute little component that you can grab from Michael's. And we're going to add some beads to it and add a little dangle from it because you know I got to have some sparkle. So that's what the Michael's project is for tomorrow. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern time and the Michael's classes are always free. All you have to do is just go to the Michael's website find the um the little click down that says classes and you can scroll through all of those classes and if you want to sign up for one you just click on it and hit register it's completely free unless it says otherwise all the classes that i do are free i don't do any of the paid classes um but all that happens is you'll just get a reminder in your inbox for when class starts you can go click on the link and it'll take you directly there it is in zoom format so that uh you're there with everybody else to check it out um, and let's see, what else do I need to tell you about the Michaels classes? Um, so the Michaels classes are, like I said, they're free. If you can't make it to the class, but you still want to see it, in about 24 to 48 hours after the Michaels class is live, they upload those to the Michaels YouTube channel where you can go and watch those on replay if you want to. Uh, and again, free, completely free. So if you have not signed up for the Michaels YouTube channel or my YouTube channel, huh, gonna have to do a little shameless plug there because this is my show. Um, you definitely wanna go ahead and do that just in case you miss a project and you want to see it and there's a lot more involved with the michaels classes than just jewelry making so if you're interested in jewelry making that's great they have a huge selection of classes you can go back and watch old ones if you want to uh, but there are other things that are available you can learn how to crochet you can learn how to knit you can learn how to draw paint uh, other kind of crafts so there's a, a plethora if you will of information available over on the michaels youtube channel for just about anything you can think of in the way of craftiness, right? Uh, so yeah, my class is tomorrow. That's 2 p.m. Eastern time. I don't do a class every single week, but you can always catch me either um, with a Michael class. You can either catch me on a Wednesday or you can catch me on a Saturday. Uh, I will be changing the time for my Wednesday classes, but it's going to be a couple months before that actually goes into effect. And I'll just keep all of you posted for that as well. All right. So the other thing is, um, I don't think, I don't think there is anything else. This is just a regular week from other, other than just having that Michael's class on Wednesday. Uh, we've got a project today and then we're going to get back together on Friday for our feel, our feel good Friday show. 
uh, where I'll have fun kits. Oh, that's what it was. I wanted to tell you guys the blue marquee necklace that was in uh, the Feel Good Friday show last week. Everybody asked because it sold out immediately. Everybody asked if I'm going to be restocking that. Yes, I'm going to restock it, but I want you to hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. I will not be restocking it this week. It will be next week. I've ordered the, the pieces for it. Everything is here. It's just, it's just going to take me a minute to get those kits put back together. So I'll give you a heads up for those of you who wanted one that were not able to get one. I'll let you know in advance. It won't be one of those things where you're going to miss it again. I promise. Uh, I'll let you know as soon as those are restocked. Okay. All right. So let's get down to business. We've got a fun project. This is an easy project. It's going to go by pretty quickly. However, I do want to inspire you and I want to show you some other things that are possible with double drilled and slider type beads. Okay. So let's get started. Shall we turn it around here? All right. So let's take a look at the sample because when we make earrings, we make two and I usually keep one already ready so that you guys can see what it looks like so you know where we're going. So what we're looking at here is a double drilled Jasper bead. So let me show you what it looks like. It's flat on the back, right? And then it is double drilled. And I know that some of you have some double drilled beads that you've gotten from Sam. Uh, these actually came from Hallcraft. You may have some things that are similar to this at home. So. I used them as the focal, like the main star of a pair of really cool earrings. And this is what we're going to do for our project. Like I said, it's going to, they're going to work up pretty quickly, but I want to talk about this kind of double drill bead. So most of the time people use them like this, right? So let me just show you, I'm going to, I'm going to pour some of them out here so that you can look. So most of the time, people will lay these out just like this. They've usually got more than one. They're double drilled. They lay them out like this, and they either make like a the front of a necklace, or they will make uh, a bracelet. Bracelet is, is probably the number one thing that this type of bead gets used for, and that's great. That's why they're flat on the back so that they lay really nicely on your skin when you're wearing it, so they're really comfortable. But I feel like there are so many other opportunities for creativity with these that I feel like don't get, they just, they're not meeting their full potential uh, in the hands of makers. And I want you guys to think outside the box. So we're going to talk about this double drilled bead, but we're also going to talk about sliders, which are made basically the same way. This is a bracelet slider, which you, you treat the same way you thread through right? It's a double. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit more after we do our project, okay? Because I do want to just, I just want to talk about what else is possible. But let's start with our earrings, okay? So our earring, like I mentioned, this is a double drilled Jasper bead. It's flat on the back. I got these from Hallcraft a long time ago. I don't even know if they still have them. I've had them for a while. They've just been kind of sitting around. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with them, but I thought they would make a great feature for today. We're using some German style wire. I'm using 22 gauge German style wire for the wire wrapping, but you're also going to need some head pins. I've got these beautiful little tiny crystals that I got from Cherry Tree Beads, and then the other beads I got from Sam. These were actually in one of Sam's bead box. I think they were in the um, they were in the magical mystery box. I'm pretty sure I might have that wrong. But they're just little check glass rondelles. They're they're like a purple with a rose gold kind of luster to them, and then these textured bicones. Okay, but you can use whatever you want to. You're gonna need a little bit of chain, a couple of jump rings, and that's pretty much it. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Okay. So we're going to use, like I said, some 22 gauge wire for this. I'm using German style wire. If all you've got is artistic wire, that's fine. But if you struggle with your wrapped loops, I definitely uh, would recommend that you, you switch to the German style wire and see if that helps you out at all. Because it does have a little bit more of a structure to it. This is considered a medium tempered wire. Whereas artistic wire and other craft wires are dead soft, 
this is specifically designed for wire wrapping and wire weaving. It just has a little bit more structure to it. Makes it a little bit stiffer, which makes your um, wrapped loops a little bit cleaner. And so again, if you struggle, I definitely recommend giving this a try. So you're only gonna need a few inches of this. I've got like, I'm gonna lay this out here. I've got roughly seven inches, six inches is plenty. You don't really need um, any more than that. You just want enough to go through your double drilled bead and then have enough left over to do a wrapped loop, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our beads to this, but we're gonna also thread our chain on as we go. So I've cut a little piece of chain here. My chain piece is about an inch and a half long. The most important part is not the length. The most important part of this is that you can find a center to this. You need a center uh, link. So when you're cutting your chain, you want to be sure that you've got an odd number of the links. Then that way you've got that center. When you look at it this way, you can see there is a definite, hold on. See how there's that single, there it is, the single link at the bottom between the two. That's our center where we want to center up that bicone that I showed you so that everything hangs nice and even. So I, um, when I cut this, again, I just make sure I have a, an odd number of the chain links for this, okay? I'm gonna take two four millimeter jump rings and I'm gonna thread those or attach those rather to the ends of my chain. So one on each end. Just gonna open that up. Close that back and I'm going to do the same thing over here to the other side. Okay. And close those back. All right, so when we thread this onto our wire, we're gonna thread on the jump ring instead of that last link of chain. If you wanna cut your chain a little bit longer and use the link instead of a jump ring, you absolutely can. I just feel like it sits a little bit neater if I've got the jump ring thread on instead of the chain links itself. <clears throat> All right, so you can see from this sample, we've got three beads in the center of our wire. We're actually starting in the center and working our way outwards. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to thread on three of these little crystals. Again, I got these from Cherry Tree Beads. I order them in bulk. They're reasonably priced. I love these. These are just a step up from the baby beads that I get from Danielle. So the ones I get from Danielle are about a two millimeter bead. This is like a two and a half to a three millimeter bead. So if you're looking for a little small crystal, they make great little spacer beads, but they also are good for your bead weaving projects, particularly the tiny baby ones that I get from Danielle. They're really good for bead weaving. All right, so I'm going to throw my jump ring on to one side and I need this to drape. So I'm going to slide my beads over here to the other side and I'm going to thread that jump ring on the other end on just like that. So that's going to sit next to each one of the beads. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to thread on another one of these little crystals on either side of that jump ring. So I'll have a total of five of the little crystals. And we just want to keep that towards the center of our piece of 22 gauge wire. Okay. All right. Now what I need to do is I need to kind of bend the wire a little bit just to bring the two ends closer to each other. And then I'm also going to straighten them out a little bit. Just makes it easier to get this thread through our double, our double drilled bead. Okay. So now we are going to bring in that double drilled bead that I have now lost in the mess here. All right. So we're just going to thread those both on at the same time. Okay. Which can be a little tricky particularly if you haven't bent your wire and then you just want to slide your bead down right up next to those two little crystals. So those should make a little, a little arch down here at the bottom underneath your double drilled bead. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can just go ahead and crisscross your wires and wire wrap just like it is. But I feel like it, it was, 
it was important to bring that color, this kind of funny color. I don't even know what you call it. It's like, it's like a teal, but it's on the green side and it's, I don't know, it's kind of swampy, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, I'm going to thread two of those on to either side. I just found that when I was trying to wire wrap this wire out the top of this double drill bead that I had better luck if I added beads here as opposed to not because then I didn't have to center up the wire. I let the beads kind of help to center the wire for me so it was less of a struggle. And I can actually show you what I mean. In fact, I would love to show you what I mean before I do this. Okay, so there's two more crystals on the top here. So just to, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, sometimes it's better to, to see it visually than it is to hear what I'm saying because I realize sometimes that I can be a little confusing. Okay, so, and I also know we, we do have a lot of beginners that hang out here with us, which we love. So we'll pretend like I put beads on the bottom of this just like we did the other piece. I'm just using another one just to kind of show you. Okay. And then, oh, whoops, that's not going to do me any good now, is it? Hold on. Okay. A darker seafoam color. I agree with you. That was, that was better than my, my explanation was swampy. Like what, where did I even, <laughs> this is swamp green, swamp blue, if you will. It's swamp blue. This is New Orleans swamp blue. <laughs> I don't know. Don't listen to me. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Now I can't get the wire to go through this one at all. There we go. Okay. So pretending that I had beads down here, like we're just, we're just doing a, um, you know, we're just, we're just doing a, a an educate for educational purposes here. Okay. Cause that's not, that's not pretty. Pretend you got beads down there. Okay, so the reason that I put the two beads up here is because look at what happens when you want to when you want to crisscross these. So if you want to crisscross them without uh, beads, that's fine. But you got to make sure that when you crisscross, your crisscross is perfectly centered, which is easy to do when you just first get started. But let me tell you what happens is once you get in here with your your chain nose pliers and you give it a bend, you can already tell that bend is no longer centered, right? It's off just a tiny bit. Like it's shorter on the left than it is on the right. And then when you go to do your wire wrap, you can really tell. Like that's, that's not too bad, but you gotta be really, really careful because you start pulling on the wire and one side is definitely going to be a whole lot shorter. And of course, my example turns out pretty perfect. So I did a terrible job of explaining why it, I, I liked the beads because then I just nailed it. But <laughs> you can understand what I'm saying, though. Right? <laughs> like one side, inevitably, when I was doing it yesterday, ended up being a little bit shorter. So my wire wrap did not stay centered in the center of my bead. It was off to one side or the other. Um, and so I found that just adding the two beads at the top really kind of helped that to, to keep from that happening. So adding the two beads and then crisscrossing, the wires have no choice but to crisscross where those two beads meet up with each other. <laughs> okay. So then when you crisscross them, take one of them and bend it straight up and down. And then you're going to use the other one as your wrapping wire. And I'm just going to wrap around about two times. Okay. Just like that. So now, yeah, it does tie in the color to the top too, which I think is also really, really helpful. Um, it just, it just kind of brings everything together when you've got the beads on the top as well. Okay. All right. So we've got our wire wrap. We trim off the excess and then we're going to thread on another one of these crystals just to kind of top that off. Okay. And then we're just going to do a wrapped loop. You can do a simple loop here if you want to. I realize the wrapped loop adds even more wire to this. So if you don't want all of that wire, you don't have to, you don't have to do a wrapped loop. Simple loop would be just as good. Okay, so we're gonna wire wrap between the loop we just made and that top bead, and then we're gonna come in and trim off the rest. 
All right, so this part of the design is done. And that's why I say this design goes by really, really quickly. That's why I wanted to be sure that we had plenty of other things to talk about while we are together today. Uh, we're gonna add our, our dangles to the bottom of this. I am gonna go ahead and add the ear wire to the top though, just so that we are just that much closer to having this design complete. And quite honestly, it looks kind of cool just like this. Uh, if you wanted to do chain drapes instead of adding beads to this, let me just kind of point out what's possible here. So I love to give you as many options as possible. So you can see where we have our chain is, is on either side of the third bead in the five. So if you wanted to do your first drape on either side of this first bead, so do a drape here and then a drape here, and then a drape here. You could actually do three drapes of chain and don't do beads at all. You could just make those drapes of chain get longer as you go. And these could be really cool chain drape earrings instead of this, this bead thing that I've got going on here. Uh, totally up to you. Just wanted to give you some, some more options, right? That's, that's the name of the game here is options. All right, so we're gonna start with our bicone in the center. That's gonna help us when we go to space out the rondelles on either side. So we're gonna take our bicone and we're gonna thread it onto a head pin. And then we are going to, these are all eye pins. Why, where are my head pins? All right, I'm gonna grab a head pin. We're gonna wire wrap this directly to the chain too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my wrapped loop started here. I'm gonna come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm just grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the bead and I'm gonna bend the wire over the top of the pliers. That way when I take the pliers away, I've pre-measured, the tool did it for me. Uh, I've, I have enough space here for my wire wraps, okay? I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers and I'm gonna take that wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. And then in order to take the wire all the way over to close up that loop, I need to rotate the placement of my pliers. So you can see the bottom barrel of the pliers is in the way of where I need this wire to go. So all I'm gonna do is just kind of rotate the pliers in my hand. So I'm going from this position to this, whoops, it would help if I could keep it in my hand. So I'm going from this position to this position without even taking anything off of the tool. Then that way I can go ahead and guide the wire over to where that bottom barrel of the pliers was and it closes up that loop. Now don't do the wire wraps yet. We're gonna take this off and we wanna wrap this directly to our chain. But first we gotta find that center link. So I'm just going to grab it with my beading awl, a safety pin, a T-pin, whatever you've got, just to be sure that we actually get that center link. Because sometimes it can be deceptive. Uh, you can think you've got it and you've actually got something else. So I marked it with my beading awl. And then I'm just going to kind of hold on with my fingers here to kind of separate that one link, right, from the rest of them. And the then I'm going to take the tail end of my wire with my bead and slide it through that single link and then just snap those two together. That's going to put that bead right in the center of that chain. Okay. So I'm going to come in with my bent chain nose pliers and hold on. And I'm just going to wire wrap. So there's no jump ring here. I'm just wire wrapping the bead directly to the chain. That keeps everything nice and secure. I don't have to worry about a jump ring coming undone or this earring getting caught on something and pulling the beads off. And I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off the excess. Okay. And then tuck in your ends just to clean it up. Okay, so that's centered. And honestly, it looks pretty just like that. You don't even have to add anything else to it if you don't want to, but I like to add extra beads to the other side of this. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add these little rondelles. I'm gonna put two on either side of my chain just to kind of fill it in a little bit and give it a little bit more body. And I'm actually gonna use a very thin jump rings for this as opposed to the regular, or not jump rings, but uh, head pins for this. So let me show you kind of the difference. This is a good, a good thing to see if you're new to jewelry making, because uh, in the very beginning, nobody told me that head pins come in different gauges. So I'm gonna pull from my, look at what I'm pulling from. <laughs> <laughs> this big mess of eye pins and head pins that I have here. I'm going to pull out some of the really thin ones and then I'll show you the difference. 
all about info today. So the project is short, but I want to give you as much info as I possibly can. Always, right? Thank you, Donna. Hi, Wanda. Okay, so these are my really thin head pins, and I have to dig for them because I usually don't keep them separated, but these are the really tiny ones. They're 24 gauge. They're very, very thin. These are perfect for pearls or gemstones that are drilled with a very, very tiny hole. Uh, they're also really, really soft, so they're very easy to work with um, without being so soft that it's hard to work with, it, it, with if that makes any sense. Because there does, there's like a fine line between soft enough to like wind it up like you're winding up a, ba a baseball pitch to winding it up and it totally destroying the entire loop that you've got going on if you're doing wrapped loops. Like there is a, you've got to walk the line with these. So uh, what's most important is the gauge, not necessarily where they come from. But if you're curious as to where I get my head pins, because I get asked this all the time, I get my head pins from first and foremost, I get them from Beadalon. So if you're looking for head pins, they have the very best quality head pins. I get the 24 gauge and then I just get the standard gauge. And the standard gauge is like a, it's either a 20 one or a 22, I can never remember, but you can see when I hold them next to each other, just a tiny, tiny difference here. They have a little bit more structure to them. They are a little bit thicker and the head on the end of them is also thicker. This makes a big difference when it comes to your beads and the drill hole, because if you want to use a tiny one of these, but your bead is drilled with a larger hole, your head pin is going to slip right through it. So I definitely recommend having both sizes on hand if you can. And again, I get them both from Beadalon. But if you can't order from Beadalon or they're out of stock or maybe they don't ship to your area, my second favorite place to get my head pins and my eye pins is Fire Mountain Gems. Okay. Uh, they are, in my opinion, they're the next uh, the next best when it comes to quality. Beadalon first, Fire Mountain Gems second. Uh, I just find that uh, their, their quality is almost as good as the Beadalon quality and I can order in bulk from them. Okay, so it just really kind of depends on what you need. But these are the two sizes that I keep on hand, and I always have them in both head pin and eye pin. Okay, and I mix and match. It's okay. Like this, this bead here was a little bit bigger of a bead. It needed a bigger head pin, something with a little bit more um, sturdy. Um, the smaller ones, these little rondelles, they need something a little bit smaller. And also it matters about the bulkiness of your wire wrap as well. Like if you're using a really small bead like this, you might not want a big bulky uh, wire wrap at the top. So maybe you want to go with the smaller gauge because ultimately it's going to make a smaller wire wrap. Okay, so let's get these beads onto the chain here. I'm going to thread each one of these beads onto a head pin. Tierra Cast has amazing quality as well. They are a little, and I don't, I'm not dogging them. I'm not dogging them because you guys know I love Tierra Cast and all the people at Tierra Cast. Uh, they're just a little bit more expensive. The quality is top notch. They're just a little bit pricier, um, but they're, they're really good. They're really, really good. I'm just, just saying. Um, they're, they are just a little bit pricier. So if you're a beginner, you might want to start out with like Beetle on or Fire Mountain Gems before you invest. Okay. Because it is, a, it, it definitely is an investment. All right. So to space these out. Now, remember, we had an odd number of chain links here. Um, but that means that on either side of our center link, we have an even number. So now we can space out where we place these beads in an even count. So I'm going to go ahead and start a wire wrap on one of these beads, and then we're going to place it on the chain. So again, coming in with my chain nose pliers, I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. Coming in with my round nose pliers, I'm going up and over the top barrel. And then again, we want to rotate the tool in our hand, just moving that top or that bottom barrel to the top so that we have room to take that wire over to the other side. That's going to close up our loop. Okay. Now, before we wire wrap though, we want to come in and look at our chain. Okay. So from this bottom link, I'm going to count up four links. One, two, three, four. On that fourth link from the bottom, that's where I want to place my first rondelle. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And on four, I'm just going to stick the wire through there. And then I'm just going to slide that right into place. 
Okay, so no jump ring here either. You can use a jump ring if you want to. Just remember that your jump rings are always going to add length, additional length to everything, right? Um, so that always kind of makes the overall look a little bit different. And then I'm just going to wire wrap in the space in between. And I'm going to come in with my cover tool and trim off the excess. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing on the other side just to make it even because right now it's, everything's a little lopsided. Okay, so we're going to start it. Whoops, we're going to start another wrapped loop. Bending the wire. And with our round nose pliers, and again, we're going up and over. We're going to rotate the pliers in our hand so that we can take that wire over to the other side to close it up. Okay. Now, again, we want to count. This time we're doing it on the opposite side. So there's our bottom. We're going one, two, three, four. And on that fourth link, we're going to insert the wire for our head pin. And then we just want to slide that chain into the loop. This takes a little wiggling. Okay, slide that in just like that. And then I'm going to hold with my bent chain nose pliers. They just keep the, the tip of the pliers out of the out of the way when I go in to do the wire wrap. Okay, so there's the wire wrap. And trimming off. All right, so now we've got a bead on either side and then we're gonna do another. So we're gonna do one more on either side. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna start out with our wrapped loop. Round nose pliers are coming in, up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side. All right, now we're gonna count up four more. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And on the fourth link from that one that we just did, right? So I started counting from the from the bead we just added. Whoops. I'm just gonna slide that in. Okay, same thing. Kind of hold everything back with your finger if you can just to keep it out of the way while you're doing your wire wrap a lot of times with these thinner head pins i can get four wraps in instead of three but don't push it either right don't push it if you can't get four don't push it because you don't want to risk cracking your the bead all right, we're going to do the same thing on the other side to finish this off. And we'll be done with these earrings. But then we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, I'm not going to let y'all go just yet. We're going to talk just a little bit. And then I will let you go. I won't take up your whole day today. All right, so we've got our, our next one started. Now, again, we want to count. But we want to count from the bead that we just added. So, okay, we're going from after that one. We're going one, two, three, four. And in that fourth one, that's where we stick our eye pin the wire from our eye pin and then just slide that on. And then just wire wrap. Okay, and trim off the excess. So this one is done. After I clean it up just a little by tucking in my end there with my pliers and that's it. Now with this one, you could fill up every single uh, link of the chain with a bead. That would be really cool. That'd be nice and full. Um, I, I like it just like it is, but you definitely could, like I said, it would fill it up. You just want to be careful that you don't add too much extra weight. So the Jasper beads are not super heavy, but they definitely are more heavy than the check glass dangles and the little crystals here. So you do got to be a little bit 
a little bit mindful about that when you start adding in things. Uh, check glasses definitely, or just regular glasses. What I would I would add. I don't know that I would add any extra weight to this with gemstones. Uh, that's also true with your bottom here. This is where gravity is going to be pulling the most. So I kept this lightweight with a check glass uh, textured bicone. I definitely wouldn't add another heavy gemstone here just because it's going to pull really heavy on the whole thing. So just keep those little things in mind when you're designing. Yeah, you want it to look good, but overall, you also want it to be comfortable to wear. If they're too heavy to wear, nobody is going to want them. Um, or you're, if you're making them for yourself, you might wear them for a little while and then take them off and throw them in your jewelry box. So just, just keep all of those things in mind. Everything weighs a little bit different. The longer the drape, the more pull. So you want to be careful about what it is that you're going to put in that center where it's going to be pulling the most. Okay, so yes, I get my chain from Beetalon. I do, I do, I do. So this is just one of the many things that you can do with a double drilled bead. Now, I want to show you that a slider works in the exact same way. I'm not going to build an entire earring, but I want to show you the different kinds of sliders and double hold things that are um, available. So you would treat these exactly the same way. Yes, I realize that there are four holes on these. There are also four holes on these as well. They're mostly used for bracelets because they lay nice and flat. Um, but you can treat them exactly the same way as you do a double drilled bead if you want to change it up a little bit. So you would just take another uh, a piece of chain, just like what, or not chain, I'm sorry, a piece of wire, just like we did here. You're going to do that with these. So you're just going to decide like what's the top, what's the bottom, okay? You can put on your little beads at the bottom. Do I have any more beads that we can play with here? Just... Just for the sake of playing, I have a couple of these little rondelles. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make a full-on additional piece, but I just want to show you. Oh, Jennifer, she says the the my niece thinks the earrings you're making are for her. Oh, totally. Right. So just we're just playing here, right? Same thing. We're just making a little a little arch down here at the bottom with some beads. So you don't have to, you can leave that off, right? Like we did here. Um, if I was gonna, if I were gonna do this, well, I'll just show you in just a second. Cause like we have a whole extra little bit of time here. So I would thread this on the same way I would a double drilled bead with my wire, except I'm just going through the openings on the back instead of two holes on a bead, right? And then I would just slide this down. All right, slide my beads right up to that. All right. And then when you look at it from the front, you have this cute little drape here. You could do it exactly the same way. Add a couple of beads here to the top. All right, to do your wire wrap. And crisscross your wires, right? And do your little wire wrap. So you can treat this exactly the same way. This is what it looks like on the back, right? But that's the back. Nobody's going to see the back, so it doesn't make any difference. But you've got this cute little slide that instead of using it for a bracelet you could use it as your focal for your like a pendant if you want it this would be a gorgeous pendant um, or an earring like we did with our double drilled bead but you don't even have to do it that way if you don't want to and you don't have to do your double drilled bead this way either uh, if you plan it in advance let me get this wire off of here So, make another piece of wire here. Kind of measure, like, just kind of eyeball it. So, I'm just kind of guessing as to where that wire might go. And you can just lay it flat and you can do the same thing with the slides as well. You don't have to add beads to the bottom. So in other words, if you want, I 
I don't want that. I don't want that to look like that. Where are my nylon gel pliers? I know they're around here somewhere. <laughs> there they are. So flatten this wire up against the bead. All right, just use your nylon gel pliers so you're not marking up the wire. Now this can be your bottom bead, right? And that wire just kind of disappear. You could use a different color if you wanted to, uh, but you don't have to put the beads on the bottom, right? You've got this bead, this double drilled bead is now secure. It can be your drop if you want it to, right? Just do your wrap loop or whatever it is. You don't have to have this arch on the bottom. It's just an opportunity for more dangles if you want to. But there's no reason why this or this can't just be the bottom of something. And you would do the exact same thing with this guy. Forget putting any beads on it. You just thread it straight onto your wire. And guys, you don't even have to use German style or artistic wire. You can do this with bead stringing wire as well. Uh, the bead stringing wire is nice and soft. When you do it on a slider, it disappears completely because that wire you see is back here on the back. Nobody is ever even going to know that that you know that that wire exists because it literally is on the back of this. When you turn it over, this is what you've got. You've got your wire up here, wire wrap. You can even do your beginnings of your wire wrap back here on the back. So all of that's hidden, right? So basically, sorry, I'm, I'm being a little messy. But basically, you would just have your single wire coming out the top of this, right? Your wire wraps are back there behind the back. Now you just have this. You can do whatever you want to with this, right? Add your beads on, whatever you want to. You can clean it up a little bit. Like I'm, I was a little messy with it, but you get the idea. Now all of a sudden I've got a drop, even though it was a, it had four holes on the back of it and it was made to slide onto a bracelet. All of a sudden, the way that I wire wrapped and added the wire to it, the bead string wire or the hard wire, or whatever, you've got, um, you've got a single wire coming out the top and this can be literally anything you want it to be. Okay. So just some, just some options when it comes to using them with wire. Now, another thing you can do with these other than making them into pendants or, or whatever, you can still use these. Uh, your slides are going to work exactly the same way and your double drilled beads are going to work exactly the same way. You can, there's no reason why you can't add these as the focal or the front section of a necklace. Um, and they don't all have to line up just like this. So they can, if you want, you can make them all just lined up and you've got this straight section of a necklace. Or you can, you can build them out and give them a little bit of a taper. And the way that you would do that is put a single bead between the top ones. I'm gonna grab some beads here. Just happen to have these sitting here. Okay, so let's say we were stringing this on a bead stringing wire. We add a single bead up here between all of the drill holes on the top, right? But now if we put a single bead in between the bottoms, then it's still just going to be straight. We don't want it to be straight. We want it to have this taper, not necessarily tape. We want it to kind of flare out. Then we would increase our beads here on this side. And of course, the more you increase, the wider the spacing between is going to, is going to be. Now, again, I'm just laying these out on the table, so they're not... They're not behaving exactly like I want them to, but you get the idea, right? So I'm, I'm forcing the spacing open and that's going to create that curve with these. So that's going to give you a really pretty curve for a necklace. And then... <laughs> I mean, my mind just keeps on going with this. I, you guys, somebody just have to stop me because I also see when I do it like this, I also see a whole other opportunity because now what I have is the first layer of something, potentially the first layer. I've got this great arch, 
but I also have an opportunity to stick a jump ring right between each one of these and hang something else. <laughs> so now I'm looking at a whole nother level where I'm going to wire wrap these guys. I'm going to, I'm going to pop a jump ring on them, slide that jump ring in between those two pearls. And now I've got a whole other layer, right? And, and that's just an, it's just another opportunity, another design opportunity with, with something that I feel like most people just use in a straight line, right? But you have the opportunity to get really, really creative with this, even though it's flat on the back, even though they're double drilled and it can be, you know, it can be challenging. You can really make this work for you in a lot of different ways. You can make a beautiful collar necklace with this. Uh, just by expanding the dis the distance between the bottoms, right? To get that awesome arch, that that really beautiful drape that you've got going on. And I could go on and on. Like from here, I could go to a whole other crazy place. And then if I wanted to close up the space here and go to a single, like I wanted to do a single piece of chain, instead of making this a double strand necklace all the way around, right? I do like I did at the top of my earrings. I'm going to take two beads on either side. And I'm going to bring those together, bring it down to a single, right? Does that make sense? Or do a wire wrap here and then add chain to it. So now you've got double in the front, but you don't have to use double materials all the way through. You could do, a, you could make it come back down to a single. Um, so I, I really just wanted to give you a little bit of extra inspiration when it comes to double drilled things, uh, whether they're double drilled beads like this um, or they're a slider because the slider is ultimately a double drilled focal or a double drilled um, component. It may not be drilled and it may have these these hooks on the back, but you're going to treat this the exact same way. It's, it's designed to lay flat, but you can still get this same kind of curve for a necklace focal instead of just lining them up if you wanted to, right? And then one other thing that you can do, just another, just one more little quick example of something, and then I will let you guys go, is you can always stack these up on top of each other. And so for instance, if you wanted to make a really cool kind of bolo style necklace and you wanted your two strands to come down to the center point, you could, could put beads in between them if you wanted to, you don't have to, right? But you could pop these in just like that and then do your little arch like we did here, right? and you've got yourself a pendant, but it comes, the two drill holes you can use, right, to, to go outwards with your strands. You do have to use kind of your imagination a little bit with the things that I'm talking about. I'm trying to show you as, as visually as I can, but you've got your left strand, right strand on your necklace that comes down to your focal and you could hang things from it or not. You don't have to hang anything from it. You don't even have to add these beads. You can just, there's your focal right in the center. So you have a ton of options when it comes to this kind of bead or component either way. So if you were looking for some ideas because you've got some of these in your stash and you don't know what to do with them or you've already made a bracelet and you have leftovers and you're like, what am I going to do? Right. Um, you you've got some you've got some options here. Uh, would those stones be too heavy for a single necklace? No, not at all. So that you got to remember your your neck is a whole lot stronger than your ears are when we're talking about earrings that's a totally different animal altogether just because we're talking about a hole that goes through you know your your earlobe whereas a necklace you've got your whole neck and your back to support these are not super heavy uh, together like this. They're just not. It's different than having all of this hanging from one piercing. So this is definitely not too heavy um, this way. And they, they wouldn't be too heavy this way. But now three of these on an earring, I would definitely say that would be a no-go. Um, that would be a little on the heavy side. And if you added a heavy bead here, one of these plus a heavy bead would, I think would be too much. But I think with a necklace, you're safe. And definitely with a bracelet, you're safe. 
Wanda said, Sarah just wrote a book, 20 things to do with double drilled beads. I know, right? If people still did books, like nobody does books anymore. If people still did books, I could do an entire book, no joke, on double drilled beads and sliders. Uh, just because these are just a couple of things that you can do with them, like for real. But nobody does books anymore, which is a shame because I got about 17 books in my head right now. <laughs> But yeah, I hope I inspired you guys, right? I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you what the earrings look like because, you know, they're pretty and that's what we were actually here to do. But hopefully I gave you a lot more information. That's always my goal. I want to arm you up with as much information as possible and as much inspiration as possible. All right. Oh, Sam says, just walked into the living room and Rachel had this on the big TV. I love that. I love that. Sam, you got to go back and watch this. It was a fun one. It was a fun one. Yeah, there are a lot. Donna says there are a lot of seed beads that are double drilled. Absolutely. You can use all of those in the exact same way, just on a smaller scale, you know, but don't shy away from double drilled beads, especially if you've got them left over. You got leftover double drills or you've got leftover slides. There are so many things you can do with them. There are earrings so you can see before I put them on. They're just really, really beautiful. They're not super heavy. But you've got that really cool. I mean, it's just a different kind of look, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, hi, Lillian. <laughs> and see, they're a little long, but you can shorten them up right? Or just turn them into a pendant. But I think they're cool. And the most important thing, like I said, is the inspiration. You know, I, um, I hope that I've inspired you to kind of look at some of the things that maybe you you've got in your stash and you don't know what to do with. Um, and that being said, let me tell you something. Um, if you have other things in your stash, guys, it is really difficult for me. I was trying to explain this to Q last night. It's very difficult for me to be creative uh, all the time. And that's my job. Like I, I got to do four Facebook lives a week that, and then a Michael's class, if there's a Michael's class in there, not only that, but I come up with kits and I do at least five kits on Fridays. Um, that's a lot of creative. <laughs> that's a lot of creativity. And sometimes I get burned out. Sometimes I get creative block. Um, but it's things like this where we can talk about something um, you know, and, and maybe I come up with something new or you come up with something new. If you've got, if you've got ideas of projects you'd like to see, or maybe you've got a component or a bead or something in your stash and you don't know how to use it, let me know, let my team know, because I'm always looking for ideas for projects. I'm always looking for ideas for lives. So if you've got something that you're stumped about, and maybe I've got one in my stash too, uh, let me know because they always make great, they make great projects. Um, and we can always get together, you know, with each other and kind of troubleshoot and it makes for great video content. So just let me know. Okay. Don't ever hesitate to reach out. I don't see all of my messages, but, um, you know, I try and the team tries. It's just a lot, but you can always reach out and let us know. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wanda says Sarah needs to go to Dollywood every Wednesday to ride roller coasters to simulate her creativity. Uh, yeah, I went last Wednesday and let me tell you something cute. He told every, all of his friends, not all of his friends, but he's already put together a whole group of us going to Dollywood next week. So we're going, like these season passes, like he's like, he's convinced we're going to get our money's worth out of the season passes. We're going again next week with like seven other people. So I'm going to go get my roller coaster on. Not this week, but next week. <laughs> Got to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm getting my uh, adrenaline in so that I can come back and be creative, you know. <laughs> oh, Donna says, love Dollywood went for the first time this year. So we've, we've been twice this season so far because we got season passes and we're going to keep going. But the first time we went, we rode all the rides. This past time we went, we rode all the rides, but then we played all the games. Okay. So by the end of the day, I should take a picture. By the end of the day, we had like, I think we had, we had four basketballs. We had like eight stuffed animals and then our drink, like we had these drink cups and like, cause yeah, we were, we were obsessed like within the midway where you could play all the fair games 
and like figuring out how to win them and then winning them. And so we ended up with like, we came back to the car and we had like a whole baseball team of stuffed animals. <laughs> They're now all on my bed, but yeah, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. I know. I know. If you've got something like that, some sort of, um, some sort of outlet to go and, and like, just get away from everything for a little while. I highly recommend it. Maybe it's not roller coasters for you, but go out there and do something and let your brain be, you know, <laughs> helps with creative block. All right, my friends, I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. I will be seeing my hardwired group today at 4 PM. We've got a great wire working uh, earrings project where we're going to do some weaving on a, a curve. We normally do our weaving flat. We're going to be doing some weaving on a curve. So if you're ever curious as to what we do in hardwired, the projects are just a step up in, uh, intensity level but are nothing totally crazy because we do have some beginners there too but um if you're curious that's what we do uh the rest of us uh will be getting back together again on friday at 1 p.m for the feel good friday show where you can join me tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern time for my michaels class over on the michaels website all right have a wonderful rest of the day you guys and i will see you guys again soon love you